Hello, people. I'm here with uh, my best friend and my English friend, Gino, again for another episode of Great. Is this seventh month already? How does it yeah, feel? Yeah, number seven. Num yes. Number seven. It feels good, man. It feels good. I like the back. I like your background, Rod, and the um, and the headset you've got on. Thank you so much. I, I need to get a better sound for everybody. So, what are we doing this month? Do you explain or you want me to? Uh, you go for it, man. You go for it. Well, uh, Gino decided on a topic, actually on a title, which is very funny. Sparks are flying. So he's going to talk about expressions with spark. And I'm going to talk about expressions with fly. And I hope you guys like it. Do you have something to add? Yeah, I mean, um, a couple of the, the phrases that I'm explaining in this, in this month's edition of Great are um, extremely colloquial to British English. So maybe, maybe people won't have heard of them, but they're extremely useful. I hear them every day, all the time. So yeah, nice. that's it. That's all I've got to say. Nice. So let's watch it. Hello, people. Gina Weir from realeverydayenglish.com. First of all, it's a pleasure to be working on this project with my friend Rodrigo again. Um, so the title of today's episode of Grey is The Sparks Will Fly. So I'm going to describe to you the most common phrases I hear with the word spark. But before we get into that, I'm going to flip the camera around, show you where I am, and then I'm going to explain what the word spark actually means. So I'm actually in a small nature reserve, which is not too far away from my house. Um, the area I live is actually quite a built-up area, um, as you've seen on other videos, but this particular area is, is quite green and quite um, natural. You can see we've got a totem pole there. Quite artistic. So before we get started, the word spark, what does it actually mean? Uh, the, it has two main uses. And the first one is, for example, if you take two live electrical cables, so you have two cables, electrical cables and you put them together you get like a little blue flash a blue flash of light and that would be described as a spark we can also use it to uh, mean like small fiery pieces that come off a fire so small pieces that are either coming off a fire or if you have a power tool like um, an axle grinder for example and you're cutting through some metal obviously hot fiery pieces of metal start to fire away from the blade and we would call them sparks as well but the first way we would use this um, here in England, this is uh, extremely colloquial, by the way. I don't think they use this in the US, but I could be wrong. If somebody from the US is watching, let me know below. Um, is the word sparker, okay? So it's just the word spark, but with a Y on the end. And we use that word to refer to an electrician. So somebody who works with electricity, we call them a sparker. The next one, which is an extreme British colloquialism is, again, is the phrasal verb spark out um, and to spark someone out means to knock them out okay so you'll hear this um, used in boxing for example uh, they'll say oh such a body got sparked out last night and it just means he got knocked out number three is to spark up and this is to light a cigarette okay so uh, here in the uk you can't you can't smoke in pubs or restaurants anymore it's been banned um, so if somebody walks into your pub and maybe goes to light a cigarette you can say hey mate you can't spark up in here you need to go outside and it means you can't light the cigarette inside the next one is actually the title of this month's episode of great which is sparks will fly and it's a way of indicating that um, an argument is going to take place okay so if two people who don't like each other are going to be at the same place and you know it you could say something like Oof, sparks will fly later on and it means because they're both in the same room they might have an argument and the last way I hear this used, and I hear this a lot as well, is we use the word spark to refer to a good connection in a relationship, okay? So you'll often hear people say, I'm just looking for that spark in a relationship, and it means they're looking for that deep connection with someone. And that is it from me for this month's episode of Great. Thanks for watching. God bless. See you all soon. Bye-bye. Ciao. Hello, everybody. This is Rod, and here we are again for another episode of Great. My friend Gino and I decided to get the phrase sparks are flying and I'm going to teach you idioms with the word fly and Gino is going to teach you idioms with the word spark. I hope you like it. He or she wouldn't hurt a fly. When you say that he or she wouldn't hurt a fly, it means the person is too gentle 
to want to hurt someone. I'm gonna give you an example. John is too big, but he wouldn't hurt a fly. So when you say that a person doesn't hurt a fly, they don't hurt anyone physically, mentally, in any way. They are super gentle, super proactive. And when you wanna say that somebody is too gentle, to do something. They always care about other people, this kind of thing. Have you ever done something on the fly? I have many, many times, mostly in school. Let's suppose that I had to do a presentation for my class and my teacher the day before the presentation would tell me that I would have 20 minutes to present it. But on the day of the presentation, my teacher comes to me and tells me, oh, you only have 10 minutes now. So I had to change my um, presentation on the fly to make it shorter and people would understand it better. So to be on the fly is when you have to do something that wasn't planned ahead. It's a very useful idiom and expression that you can use. It's an everyday life idiom. I use it very much. I have to do a lot of things on the fly. When you are a teacher, you are always doing things on the fly because if something doesn't work, let's suppose that I'm using a projector and the projector is not working, so I have to change it on the fly to find another way to do the same thing I was supposed to do if the projector was running fine. This next one is really nice. It is fly off the handle. When you fly off the handle is when you lose your temper unexpectedly and quickly. Let's suppose that I come home and I told my oldest son to do all his homework before dinner. And as I'm coming home, I text him and ask him if he had done his homework. And he tells me that he didn't. It makes me fly off the handle because his only duty is studying. So when you ask him to study, he tells me that he didn't have time to do so. So when I come home, I am flying off the handle because I lost my pool because I asked him to do the only thing he's supposed to do and he didn't do it. Another thing that makes me fly off the handle is when I'm working in one of my electronic devices that I use for work, stop working. It makes me fly off the handle because I want things to work perfectly when I'm teaching, when I'm helping someone. It really makes me fly off the handle when my things to teach are not working properly, the devices that I use, and also when my children, mostly the teenager, uh, don't do their school assignments or homework or whatever when they are supposed to. If you are talking to a friend and you are really nervous, about something that's going on and your friend tells you, please try not to fly off the handle. Everything is gonna be okay. You can use it in the negative form as well. When pigs fly, I like it a lot. Let's suppose that you ask me point blank, Rodrigo, when are you not going to be a Madonna fan anymore? And I tell you, when pigs fly, it means that I'll never do, this will never happen. So when you say when pigs fly, is because you think that something will never happen. Well, these were the expressions I wanted to teach you because I thought they were very nice. I would like to thank my friend Gino for one more month together making this project that I think is so important and people like it very much. Thank you so, so much. See you next month. Thank you, Gino, once again, my friend. Bye-bye. See you. Thank you. So we're back. Thank you, Gino, for your part. I love the expressions. I'm going to try to use them. It was really cool. I like the place where you recorded, as always, because you choose special places to record. I don't know how you can do that, but okay. What are your final thoughts? Yeah, I, I really enjoyed. Obviously, I, I really enjoy working on this project with you every month. It's good. Mm -hmm. The expressions that you that you discussed today were great, and uh, I'm sure that your audience will get some good use out of um, utilizing these phrases in their mm -hmm. English conversations. That's yeah. all I've got to say.
I'll talk to you next month then for another episode. Thank you okay. so much. I hope you guys like it. It's always a pleasure to record and collaborate with you. You're awesome. Never forget that. See you next month. See you next month. Bye-bye, people. Bye. Thank you. Bye-bye.